What's up, divas and divos? What's up? What's up? What's up? Okay. Now that I've gotten that out, like, what's up, you guys? It's your girl, April. So today's video, of course, is Real Talk Wednesday. Okay? So I'm feeling really good. I'm like, uh, you know, like... I'm feeling good as possible, okay? So just a quick update because I really don't want this real talk to be long. That's just because I got some shit that I need to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I gotta finish a video, so seriously. But just an update, my um, full hysterectomy surgery will be November 29th, this November 29th. And I have to be there at 5.30 in the morning, okay? Like a bitch be sleeping at that time. But okay, cool, surgery is at 7.30. I don't get to go home that day, which really freaking sucks. I don't really want to be around a bunch of hospitalized people, but I will be and I'll be there and probably hopefully I'll be in good spirits and chair, but let's not, let's, let's get past that. I'm not going to be in any good spirits or chair. Okay. I'm just going to be fucking out of it. And God forbid that I can't get something that I want like to eat. I'm going to be pissed. Or how about this? What if they don't offer weed in the hospital? Because they don't. But what if I want to get high? Because I'm going to be in pain. I guess the meds that they're going to give me is probably going to work just as well. So, yes, you guys, November 29th, I will be in the hospital for two days. So, if you want to come and visit me, you're more than free to do so if you live in the West Valley. Like, West Side. Like, if you live in the West Valley of Arizona, like Phoenix, you know, like Avondale, Glendale, then you can definitely come and check me out. Like, you know, send me an email. And if I really, really like you, oh, no, I'm just fucking with you guys. But, you know, if you really want to come visit me, well, I don't know if I really want people to come visit me because I probably won't even have a wig on and I'm definitely not going to have any makeup on. I know for certain that I'm going to have some lashes on. And I've already thought about that whole lashes thing. Like, what if I wake up from that freaking medicine, medical induced coma sleep they put me in and I don't got no lashes on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what if they took my lashes off or like they somehow just came off? I would be so fucking vexed. Like seriously, to wake up and look like Kermit the motherfucking frog would piss me off. So I'm definitely going to do my lashes like the night before because I need to at least look somewhat 25% decent. Like, if you have on good lashes and you got on some lashes, then you good. You really don't have to make up your face because, you know, like, my eyebrows have grown back in. So I just fill them in a little bit. I, I Like, my eyebrows are fully grown in now. So, you know, I just fill them in a little bit and just grow, dr draw a little tiny bit at the end. But, I okay, so, like, I got eyebrows. I've got lashes on. And I've got good skin. And I've got freckles. So, I mean, like, what could go wrong? I mean, I was going to, like, glue not not glue, but you know, I was going to adhere me a lace wig down the night before. Cause I mean, you know, like, listen, I don't really want to go in there with high expectations and then come out looking like a hot ass mess. So I was thinking like, you know, or maybe I'll just slick my own hair down. I don't really know because then who is going to do my hair for me or just upkeep me. So I don't really know if I want visitors. I don't really want anybody to see me in my worst. Okay. Though I have been seen in my worst, but I will be there on November 29th, so if you want to send me some chocolates, candy, flowers, then, you know, it's a Brazo Women's I keep thinking of the Women's Hospital, but it's a Brazo West Valley Hospital, okay? So, yes, I will be there, and I will be there, and I will be square, or at least something like that. I'll be, like, drugged up, so, you know, I'm not really looking forward to that day, like, I've got a lot to do before then. Like, I've got to cook Thanksgiving dinner, which I'm so happy about because I get to cook Thanksgiving dinner. And then the next day after Thanksgiving, I am going to go ahead and hang up my, put up my Christmas decor. So that's going to take me like three days. Okay, so I've still got time. Then I got to take the girls to get their braids redone because I did promise Nay and Mumsy that they could get like a silk press. But I'm not going to be able to upkeep that for, you know, while I'm, you know, resting. So... I told them at the end of January, they can get the braids taken back out and they can go ahead and get a silk press. Now, mind you, Nay and Mumsy's hair is like, well, the length of this wig is shorter than their hair, but their hair is like a little bit, 
um, thicker than this. Like, I don't know, 4C, 5C, 6C, 7Z, A through Z. I don't know what type of curl pattern they have, okay? That was just invented, like, a few years ago. They didn't have that shit when I was a kid. It was just like, your hair is either nappy or your hair is either nice. That's all it was back then. So, or coarse. I don't know. But they have some really nice thick hair. I do know that. And I'd be jealous. A girl be jealous, but I can't, it's hard for me to do their hair, so they're going to get their braids back in, so I've got all this stuff that I need to do by the 29th, besides edit and record videos, so God, please help me, so anyway, that is the update on me, okay, and other than that, we're just going to get into this real talk real quick, oh, but the, the hair, the hair, this that I have on is actually a U-part wig by a website called NaBeauty, N-A-Beauty.com. Let me tell y'all something. I have requirements and policies. So if you ask me to do a hair review for you video, I'm going to send you my policy. And it says if it's a wig that's already made, then it's like a two-week upload process. If it's maybe two to three. If it is something that I have to make, then it's like five weeks. Why would you fucking email me the day after I get the hair and ask me when's the video going to be up? I ignore that shit. I don't even respond, okay? And then you ask me a few days later again. I ignore you. I don't even respond. And then if you do it again, I still ignore you. Like, fucking chill out, okay? It'll be up when it's up. You act like you the first on the fucking list. Anyway, so if you want a real talk, oh yeah, so it's a it's a kinky straight U part wig. I didn't even ask them for a U part. I'm gonna make this bad boy into a half wig because U parts are just a little bit more technical for me. Meaning my hair, the way my hair is set up, it doesn't really hold onto a U part like that, like the clips and stuff and the hair combs. It just is not really good for my hair. So and my hair is thin and fine. So those tracks right there in the front don't be covered like that. So. I'm going to just make this into a U, um, to a half of like I did my other one like this that I gave my daughter. So anyway, if you want to, um, yeah, it's kinky straight. So if you want a real talk video about yourself, okay, or somebody you know, you got some tea to dish out, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovefers2012 at gmail.com and she put in the subject line, real talk. So that way I know that it is real talk. And if you want to change the uh, names of the people in your email, like you know that Shaquisha is going to be watching this and she know you're going to be talking about her, then you might as well change her name to Maribel, okay? But if you don't change the names and you don't tell me you change the names, 99.9.9% .9 of the time, baby zaddies, you are the fathers. I will definitely change the names for you guys. So in that case, we about to get into this real talk real quick because I got some things to do and I'm not going to make this one long like last week when I was doing my goddamn makeup. We're just going to make this real short. Okay. <laughs> Huh? 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 What? So I wanted to start it off with some good news, and I'm not really sure if you guys remember this email that I received last October of 2017, but I sure do because I remember that I was crying as I was reading this email because this was a young lady who was just wanting to lose weight, okay? And I can't remember word for word, but, you know, she just was kind of like self-conscious and she just started watching my video. Um, you know, I did the video about her and she would watch this video like relent relentlessly all the time. And then what was so crazy about it, her fiance emailed me, okay, and said he knew that she, the, the video was about her. As much as she liked to watch me and as much as she was replaying the video, she knew, he knew that it was about her. And he wrote me an email. That's the one that I was crying on. He wrote me an email and um, he was just basically expressing his love for her. And I was just like in tears because it was just amazing that he paid that much attention to what she was watching. You know what I'm saying? And 
he found it in himself to write me an email and express himself to me about how he feels about his fiance. You don't really see that a lot in men, which is like, okay, it's a good thing that, you know, I thought that was like a beautiful thing. Like you don't see a lot of men that's like that, which is unfortunate. Like they have a soft side and a lot of them just don't want to show that side because then they think it's not masculine. But I love when they're affectionate like that. Like me, for example, like I'm an affectionate person, but I can be kind of standoffish at times too. Like, I don't like to be too, too, too affectionate because I feel like if I do, you're just going to walk all over me. Like, not even walk, but you're going to have the, the drum line drumming on my ass, stomping. You know what I'm saying? And I really don't want that. Like, I have too much things to do in life to be stomped all over. So, for me, being so affectionate is sometimes like... A little bit standoffish I, but I do know how to be affectionate you know what I'm saying but I do appreciate a good affectionate man and so I know you know what I'm saying like I have I have one okay I do have one and I know you guys are probably like bitch do my to divorce him okay so you know he did have his flaws and he did have his bad habits okay and it was drinking and I'm so happy that he is not that type of person anymore and I'm happy for him so you know what I'm saying I will say this that you know He's always been a very affectionate person. Just that, you know, the alcohol, you know, sometimes will have him running off at the mouth. And when you drink and you run off at the mouth and then you come to me and run off at the mouth, girl, a girl be so fucking hand happy. Like, I can't keep my hands to myself. So, you know, it was time that I walked away from it. But he's always been a very sincere affectionate person and it's great when you have a person in your life a man or a woman who's very in tune with your feelings and so I can be that way too but sometimes I kind of like put my wall up a little bit just because I don't want to be vulnerable and I don't want you to see that side of me and feel like oh I'm just weak and vulnerable because I'm definitely not that but her boyfriend her fiance emailed me and um I was just in tears and she sent me an update email um a few days ago, I think it was a few days ago, and um, it was it was the the best news like to receive from a subscriber that something good has come out of a real talk. Like I have gotten lots of emails that have had positive endings, and I'm happy about that. You know what I'm saying? And I even find it to be a positive ending when you've walked away from a relationship that you had no business in in the first place that was just like toxic for you. So I hopefully I remember because y'all know y'all y'all motherfuckers know my my memory is slow. But hopefully I remember to post um those videos down below so you guys can see them or definitely at the ends or like you know that little box that pops up on the thing here. I'll try to remember to put it there. I should remember if I'm fucking editing it, right? So anyway, let's get into this email. Because like I said, I don't want it to be too long. Hi, April. Last year, October 31st, I emailed you with my real talk story about my fiance and I when I was struggling with my weight. And this month makes one full year since that situation has taken place. I just wanted to share with you that since the day my fiance shared his side of the situation with you via email, he kept all of his promises and I was able to lose 54 pounds almost meeting my ideal weight of 180 from being 250 pounds whenever I started. Now, first of all, let me just stop right there. Bitch, I'm really mad and hating on you right now because you weighed 250 pounds and lost 54 pounds. I weighed 224 and I'm still like at one, well, 190 now. Like I'm hating, I'm jealous and I'm happy and I'm congratulating you too because it's hard work and it's determination. So I applaud you, girl, please email me your secrets because I really would like to know, like seriously, this is what I call hard work and dedication. Um, your advice to help to us help our relationship become so strong. We communicate so much better and Javon thanks me every day for the experience that we went through when emailing you. We are so thankful for you being a part of the situation that I knew and he realized at that time was a battle in our path. Most exciting news that marks a celebration for this one year real talk moment. We found out that we are expecting baby number two and I am seven weeks pregnant. Also, Javon and I will tie the knot on November 21st in New Orleans, the same place and day we first met. So congratulations, 
definitely congratulations. I'm so happy for you. You know what I'm saying? You, so you lost the weight, you got yourself pregnant, and you're about to get married. So I congratulate you. You know what I'm saying? I'm jealous. But I'm happy. No. Nah. Um, we both agreed that this good news of our blessings would be shared with you. Again, thank you so much for your advice and kind words of encouragement. Also, may God continue to bless you and your spouse, most of all your family, with peace, love, and happiness. Since, um, love, you know, love. So that was like amazing. Like, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I like to share good news, especially if you get knocked up. Like, girl, hey, to my. My little words of wisdom. Like, listen, I don't have no words of wisdom. I just use self-experience and the things that I've gone through. And you know what? I'm happy to see that the things that I share with you guys is and enables your relationship to be stronger with your loved one, your spouse, your family members, your friends, with whomever, or any obstacle that you have to overcome. And you be able to email me and I give you just my personal experience or personal advice because I went through stuff that I'm happy that you are able to just conquer whatever it is you need to do. And, you know, honestly, I really wish that that would have worked for me back when I was married, but like, I can't give my own self. Like, what do I look like sitting here giving my own self a real talk video? You know what I'm saying? That's just weird. But, you know, at least I know that I am able to help other people. And also, I'm able to learn from my own mistakes, too. So that's why I like to share a lot of things with you guys. Like, I'm able to, like, move forward. And I'm always able to admit to, like, I'm wrong. I'm not saying I'm the biggest person or saying I'm sorry. But if I'm wrong, I'm fucking wrong. And you know, sometimes like in life, we have to just be an adult. Like truly don't get me wrong. I don't like people to disrespect me. I definitely don't like to be called out. I just don't like to be disrespected at all in any type of fashion. And sometimes, you know, as an adult, you definitely have to walk away from that. You have to just be the bigger person. And I know it's like a cliche. Oh, you got to be the bigger person. You do have to be the bigger person and you have to realize, like, listen, me walking away from you with your big ass mouth running off being belligerent is something that's going to help you in the long run. And it's definitely going to help me because I don't really want to get in trouble. I don't want to spend my time in jail for somebody that's not even worthy. So a lot of times I, it's not a lot of times, but there have been enough times where I've had to just kind of like diffuse the situation and just walk off or hang up because I don't really want to get into an argument with you and I don't want my blood pressure to get high and on top of that if you want to argue with me face to face for face value and you spew out some shit that's really disrespectful god forbid that i put my hands around your throat then i'm going to jail and like i really don't want to have to bail myself out because i know i will because i am not about to sit in jail and i just feel like it'd just be a waste of my time so a lot of times we do have to be an adult and you know it's cool that when you get older you're able to see the wrongs that you have been through or done in a relationship to where you can get past that and move forward and just realize like you know what i was in the wrong blah 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 let me just be an adult about the situation so you know it's a lot easier for me nowadays to do real talk than it was like seven, eight, nine years ago because I have matured a lot more. And a lot of things really just don't bother me. Like, I'm, I, you know what? Let me tell you something. Life is way too short. I'm not about to let little, little minor things really get to me because it's not really that important. Like, you know, if you're someone in the street and I really don't know you and you want to give me the nasty look and you want to just start running off at the mouth, girl, you're wasting your time, your energy because I don't have time for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's just too much in life in general to just prosper from and be happy with than to just take the negative all the time. And there are so many negative Nancys in this universe to where it's like, I feel like sometimes it overpowers like the positive people, the negative people and the positive, which is unfortunate. But I do know like in time, if you do see someone in your family, family member, friend, whatever, that isn't mature, that hasn't matured. Hopefully in time that they will. And I say this, you know, freely because I still feel that way. Like hopefully my kids will mature more and grow up some, the adult ones at least. You know what I'm saying? Because they're still young and hopefully they mature a lot more. Now, granted, I, I, I always compare myself to them. Like not even myself to them, but in general, you know, like you see the youth today and they're like, damn, I didn't do that shit when I was a kid or a teenager. Granted, I may not have, but... 
when I was a teenager, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have all that shit. So there's a lot more that allows these youth to act crazy, you know? So I just hope and pray, like, a lot of people mature over the years and are able to just, like, reconcile with those who just have, like, you know, come across their paths as something as in a negative format as in a negative energy. And I'm glad that I was able to help this couple because it sucks when you feel like you're overweight and you just don't feel attractive and sexy. I understand that. I truly understand that. I was looking in the mirror the other night and um, I just felt so ugly and unattractive, like butt ass naked. I was just like, oh, girl. That's how I felt. Okay. And you, you have to count your blessings. Like, Yo, you know what? There's so much more to just this, but I can understand and I can totally relate to how she felt. You know what I'm saying? As a woman, it'd be so hard for us at times. We go through a lot, regardless of what you may feel or think about just being a woman in general. We go through a lot bodily wise, mentally wise, you know what I'm saying? So just small things like weight is like, oh God, it's just so hard to deal with. But I'm glad that I was able to, you know, give my my words of advice or just how I feel about the situation so that way it can help her and it may have helped someone else we don't know but I'm just glad about that so I also really wanted to take a quick moment to thank the young lady and I, I don't know her name but I did get the candles that you sent me to my P.O. box which is by Gold Cannon and she sent me three of these lovely candles okay now I love it when people know what I like like I love like Christmas and winter scents because they're just so strong and I love like the Bath and Body Works and she told me to give these a try so she sent me three of these and these actually do smell really really good I do have one burning downstairs and they're all the same which is good frosted branch so it kind of reminds me of like a pine tree and I freaking love the smell of fucking fresh pine trees and I've never heard of this candle company until she told me about it and I've still never seen them but I thought it was such a nice gesture so I wanted to say thank you so much for sending me the candles I really appreciate it I got them when I'm when did I get them I think when I came back from New York and I forgot to say a special thank you last week because I know she does watch my videos and these are cute like these are so cute you can put them like anywhere and they'll be unseen plus the glass is like really pretty so you can definitely save it it has like designs all over never heard of this company gold cannon but i will say this that the candles do smell good and i'm very grateful and appreciative for this because i'm a huge candle collector like girl my house has to smell good at all times like i need these candles after this video i'm going to bath and body works because they got a sale so so now we're going to move on to the next one. Um, like I said, I didn't want this to be too long because, you know, there's just, I just didn't want it to be too long. Okay. Now, hi, April. You can call me Sammy. I've been watching your Real Talk video for a very long time now. I tell you, they have gotten me through very hard times. So thank you for that. You are so hilarious. I try to be girl. You have a very lovely family as well. They okay. I have a short real talk question for you. I've been seeing my boyfriend for about three months now. Things are going very well. And this past weekend, I told him I love him. His response was that he doesn't feel the same way at this time. But he adores me and cares about me very much. I'm a little bit heartbroken. Do you think that him not saying I love you back is a red flag? What do you think I should do? Here's a pic of me. See attached. Now, bitch, if I was your man, I'd say I love you, too, because she fucking beautiful. I don't know, but why does she look like something that needs to be modeling this hair she got on? Like, she's really pretty. Like, if I could show you her picture, dudes would be like, well, if that nigga don't want her, I want her. Cause she's beautiful. She's like, she's got this hair on. Like, I don't know if it's her hair or not, but I, I don't think so. But she just looks like she's modeling this hair. Like, she's just really pretty. So, Sammy. Sammy wants to know. She's been with her boyfriend for three months. She done told him he, she loved him. Okay? She done, she done said that. She done went there and said, I love you. And he was like, well, I don't feel the same way. But I adore you. And I love being around you. I love the time that we spend. 
in the hands that we hold. But I just don't feel that way. So she wants to know, is that a red flag? Because he didn't say he loved her back. And she was a little bit heartbroken. I get that you're heartbroken. I would feel I would feel some type of way too in my feelings. I mean, because that it's not like it's hurtful, but it is kind of hurtful. Like at least he didn't just leave it at that and not say anything. You know what I'm saying? At least he was honest, which is a which is like okay, a first. Because normally when you tell a guy that you love them, they always say I love you too. Uh, you know, or they respond back with the same exact gesture. You know, and a lot of times it's done because they want to reciprocate it back to you. They don't want to, you know, leave you like hanging in the dust. Like I have done that before, not to my husband, but just in general. And I was, oh yeah, knowing them well, I could care less about your funky ass. But I will say this, it is a little bit hurtful when you tell someone you love them and then they say that they don't feel the same way, but they do adore you as well as they care about you. You know what I'm saying? Um, which is better than nothing. Now, three months is is quite short. Like a lot of people don't feel like they can honestly say to another person that they love them in three months. Like, I don't know. I, me personally, if I just started dating you, I wouldn't tell you that I loved you in three months. Okay. That's not about to happen. Um, and the type of person that I am is definitely not about to happen. Like seriously, I'm definitely not about to tell you I love you in three months. That would be mean, right? But it's the truth. Oh, so she wants to know, is it a red flag? It's not necessarily a red flag. It's definitely not. It's that like three months is sh is really short term. And like you didn't really explain the situation of when you told him you loved him. Like were you getting fucked and you told him you loved him? Okay. Because that's like a given right there. You know, you get in the D and it's so good. You'd be like, oh my God, I love you. Like even though you really didn't mean that shit. Now don't get it twisted. When I say that to my husband, I mean that shit. Like I love you and I love what you're giving me. But it's a different way that I say it, that he knows that it's sincere, you know what I'm saying? Because I just like the whole point of me being with him and us being together. So that's the part that makes me feel the love, like we are as one. But did you tell him that while he was giving you the D? Because then it would kind of make things awkward a little bit if he was to say, well, I just don't, while he's humping you. Well, I just don't feel that way, you know what I'm saying? But I adore you. And this is me humping, okay? But I adore you. And I care for you. Like, while he's looking down at you, like, you know, he's humping. That would kind of be the time when you don't really want to say something like that. But, like I'm going to say again, don't feel heartbroken. Because at least, let me tell you something, he was honest. Because later on down the line, you could say, oh, well, I thought you loved me. And he could say some shit like, I just told you that because you said that to me. That would be heartbreaking to me. Definitely heartbreaking. Okay? At least he told you the honest truth. But also, in return, let you know he adores you and he cares about you. Now, granted, like I said, three months is not a long time at all for anybody to say, I love you. But, you know, you cannot control the heart. Me, personally, I just wouldn't tell anybody I love them. Even if I did after three months, I'm going to keep that shit to myself. Only because, listen, man, I know the motherfucking outturn. I know the turnout. I know what's about to go down if I tell you I love you and you don't say that shit the fuck back. Or I tell you that shit, that means that you probably feel like you got me wrapped around your motherfucking dick. Um, excuse me. I did say the D word. Fingers, okay? And I'm just, just that easy and vulnerable. Listen, I wouldn't feel heartbroken because he didn't leave you hanging and he didn't lie to you. And sometimes it's really hard to find honesty in a relationship, especially in the beginning. Three months is not a long time. You know, you're still in that representative stage, meaning that the person that you're fucking with right now, you seeing his representative. You're not really seeing his true self. Like, he probably going to be like a real, he could be like a real mean motherfucker. He could be an asshole. He could be all types of things. But, you know, six months to a year, they at their representative stage. They getting in good with you. They 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 showing their best effort. They putting their best foot forth. You know what I'm saying? They doing all that cool stuff just to let you know, like, you in there. We good. We good. And three months is a very short time. So, I would not necessarily feel like, you know what I'm saying? it's a red flag because he's not, it doesn't seem like he's got his representative out. You know what I'm saying? He's being honest and he's telling you that that's not how he really feels. However, he adores you. And maybe your 
representation or interpretation, excuse me, of love is something a little bit different than what his is. You know what I'm saying? Like people love, love people for all different types of reasons. And I think to me personally, like there's all different levels of love. You know what I'm saying? Like there's unconditional love, which like I have for my husband, like, and, and so much more love. Like I always tell him, I love you more. Like I love him to death. Like I seriously really fucking love this man. Like He's the only one for me and I would never want to be with anybody else but him. And I give him all my love next to my children too. And I just like, I love him unconditionally. I just love him so much to where I just can't even explain it. It's just a lot. The way I feel about him is like everything. Okay. And I know he feels the same about me, but then there's this stage of love where we just got together. You cannot necessarily say that you love this man that you've been with for three months the same way that I love my husband who I've been with for 20 years. You cannot compare the two because there are so many different sacrifices that you have to make in order to be with a person in a relationship sometimes that these sacrifices come from love. You know what I'm saying? And some people are not willing to make those sacrifices. And this three month relationship compared to like mine or even a relationship that's like a year or two, it's not the same type of love. So you may feel like you really do love him, but you do love the fact of being around him. You love the fact of sharing time and moments with him. That's what you probably do love. Okay. Not necessarily. You love him enough to have his babies. You love him enough to bail him out of jail. You love him enough to um be with him after he didn't cheated on you or vice versa or whatever negative shit. You know what I'm saying? Because three months is not a long time and, you know, there are some type of boundaries. There's levels to loving someone. I'm honestly, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that feels that way. Because if we were together for three months and I felt like I loved you and then you started fucking other bitches on me and you crashed my car and did shit in three months, nigga, I'm going to leave you the fuck alone. I'm not going to fuck with you. I'm not even going to try to hear what the fuck you got to say. And then there's the other people who've been with someone for so long and they cheated on them, <clears throat> crashed their car. You're going to try to work through that. Okay. So it's a totally different type of fucking level. There's levels to this. Like seriously, bitches, there's levels to this. Okay. Straight up. There's levels to this, but I would not necessarily say that it was a red flag. At least he was being honest. Okay. And me personally, I would, I would chill on the I love you shit with him. Like, seriously, you cannot force somebody to tell you that they love you, especially if they're not in that category yet. And it would be more hurtful if he said it to you only to make you feel good about what you said to him. You understand what I'm saying? So in return... I don't feel like it's a red flag. If you're spending quality time together and you're making the best of the situation and you're working on things together and you're having a good time with him, then I would not necessarily say that he does not love you or it's a red flag or he's a bad, bad person. You cannot put a time frame on how you love somebody like, oh, well, I love you now, so you should love me. It don't work like that. It doesn't work like that. Each person is different, okay? His conception of love may be something totally different from what you feel, okay? Each person person is different. And if he treats you genuinely like a woman and respects you and makes you feel good about yourself and he makes you happy, then sweetheart, there's no red flags about it. He just is not in that stage where he is ready to just jump out there and say, I love you. Okay. Saying I love you has a lot of shit behind it. Okay. A lot of shit. You just don't want to tell people you love them and you really, really don't. Like that's so negative. And I think like that's so fucked up to do to people is to tell them that they love someone and they really don't. Like that shit is dead ass wrong. You know what I'm saying? So me personally, I wouldn't say it was a red flag, but I would not definitely force him to feel like he needs to reciprocate the same thing that I stated. But me personally, bitch, I would just not say the shit no more. And you wait until it's the right time. And maybe the right time will allow him, will allow him to say it back to you. But as long as he was honest, which is the most important thing, and he told you how he really feels about you, then sweetheart, continue on with your relationship and see how it goes from there. Straight up. So, you guys, we're going to move on to the last one. Like I told you guys, it's going to be real quick because I got some things to do, hunties. Yeah, I got things to do. Believe it or not, I do. Mm -hmm. So, this one is going to be a little bit long. Okay. 
This is Brie again. Hello, Miss April. This is Brie again. I don't know if you remember me. I had the issue with one of my ex-best friends who had the hotel party inviting random strangers. So far, life is good, but at the same time, my life feels like a wreck. Lately, my mother and father have gotten into an argument, and it's got so bad that he punched my mom in the face. I screamed at him and pushed him off of her and told him to leave. My older brother even helped with getting him off of her while my younger brother, who was eight years old, was afraid and hid in the closet. I was so scared and mad that I don't know what to do. This is not the first time he hit my mother. And all the time, my mother keeps taking him back because he provides money for food. I'm so sick of it, and that's stressing me and my siblings out. The reason why he gets angry and hits her, my mom, is that he claims my mother is seeing other guys, which might be true. My mom's response is that she is single and can do as she pleases. Although their arguments and fighting get me upset, they're both at fault. My father should never hit a woman no matter what the circumstances, and my mother should learn to just leave him and not just sleep with him for money. If she needs to help, if she needs to help me and my older brother's if she needs to, me and my older brothers always offer to pay more rent and food, but she always denies it. It hurts to see this chaos go on in my family because it's like I don't get peace anywhere. I go to college full time for nursing. I work part time and make $15.91 at the hospital. And my relationship with my boyfriend, who is now my ex, is gone. We've broken up because he claims he is too busy for me and that he wants me to wait for him until he gets his job situated. I said, okay, and continue talking to him, but more and more our conversation felt like it's just distant. I began to get worried, and I was looking through his social media. I know I'm wrong, and so another girl tagged him saying, so proud of you, bae. I was so heartbroken, and he liked all of her pictures. I immediately texted him and said, so much for waiting, huh? And send him the screenshots of her tagging him. He replied, you don't have to wait anymore. I was crushed and cried to one of my closest friends named T. She told me to continue crying until you have no more tears left because you need to leave the pain out, let the pain out. She even said we should trash his car, but I backed out and stated no because he might call the police. Good idea. We didn't trash his car a few weeks later, which was last Thursday. He contacted me and, com and commented under one of my photos with heart eyes. I am friend of him, but I guess my account was not private, which shocked me. I said, please stop. He inboxes me saying, are you still mad at me? I said, yes. He said, why? I said, what do you mean, why? He stated he doesn't remember why I was mad and was a little confused. I told him, you are a cheater and you always hurt me in the same way. He kept denying it, but wouldn't explain to me who that girl was and why it happened. He stated he always thought I was not ready, but he always wanted me. I told him to explain, and he said it's too much to explain. I began to get frustrated and told him to basically stop hurting me and leave me alone. He stated he contacted me back to where to see where things could go and said he hurt me too much to tell me how he feels about me and he would hurt me no more and leave me alone. He apologized multiple times and then unfriended me. I feel so heartbroken and lost. I just don't know what to do with my life. My father is gone and hasn't seen him in days. My ex left me. My friendships with people seem to be disappearing. It's all horrible for me. I want to move out, but going to school and working part-time, I only make $550 each check. And so far, I have been saving for a car and have saved $5,700. But I don't have my license, just my permit, because no one wants to teach me how to drive. And so I don't know if I can buy a car with a license. I live in MM, I think Minnesota. Everything is falling apart in my life. Please help me, Miss April. Thank you so much for reading this long letter. Love, Bree. So first of all, Bree shit is starting at home. You know, home is supposed to be a safe haven. It's supposed to, home is, home is where the heart is. You're supposed to go home and be happy. And unfortunately, her mom, her mother and father are getting into physical fights, um, altercations. You know, her mother and father are not together, but her mom is single. She sees other men, but still uses and sleeps with the father because he provides money for her. However, Bree and her brothers have been offering her more rent and more money, but she just is denying it. So she's tired of seeing this, which I can totally understand. And as far as your father putting his hands on your mother, let me tell you something. There's always what we call the police. No woman should have to endure being hit. However, what you do need to do is have a sit down with your mom, you and your oldest brother, your eldest brother, and let her know, like, listen, mom, we love you and we love Papa. We love Daddy, whatever you want to call him. We love you both the same. But what we don't love is the altercations and the fights that you guys are getting into over foolishness, you know. 
He provides money for you and he expects you to be with him. But yet and still, it's kind of like you're leading him on just to be used and then go out with other men. And me and my brother have already offered you more money. Now, here's another thing your mother can do. If she needs more money instead of sleeping with the father, she could take him to court for child support being that you have an eight-year-old brother. And that's the way she can get her money instead of having to open her legs up and sleep with the man. That's just the easiest way. Like, listen, let me tell you something. If I get money easy... I'm not about to be opening my legs up. And I'd rather just, you know, get the child support and get it going. But you definitely do need to have a sit down with your mom, you and your brothers, and let her know that this shit ain't cool. Your little brother is eight years old. He's running and he's hiding into the closet. That is not good for him. And that is a form of child neglect. And you can let your mom know that having your children around an abusive relationship is a form of child neglect, okay? And seeing him run into closets and hide is not fair to him because he's only eight and he's getting scared. So you definitely need to have a long, hard mother and daughter, mother and son family talk with your mom to let her know, listen, this is not how we should run and conduct our lives. This is not okay. This is not looking okay. This is not what we do. You're putting fear into our eight-year-old brother. You're involving us into this nonsense and we don't want to have to pick sides. Like, seriously? Your mom needs to get it together, go to child support court, get some money like that, and then she can go ahead and continue on with her relationship with other men or whoever and not have to worry about your dad coming over, kicking in the door and punching her in her face. Like, who the fuck punches a woman in their face? Like, I mean, another woman, of course, but a man to punch a woman in the face is, like, ridiculous. Like, that is the most cowardly thing you can ever do. Like, seriously, I think if I was to get punched in my face by a man, I would definitely want to kill him after that. Definitely. But that's just one thing. And then, you know, like she's just broken up with her boyfriend because he claims that he has no time for her because he wants to get his job situated. But yet still, Brie goes on social media, sees that he's getting all type of hard eyes and being called bae and shit like that from another female and then screenshots it to him and he tells her, well, you don't have to wait anymore. Let me tell you something. When a nigga tell you, you know, I just want to be friends with you because I got to get my life together and I got to do my work and I got to find a job. That means some other bullshit. What man wants to put his love life on hold so he can get a motherfucking job? Okay, you can do both. It's called multitasking, bitches. It's called multi-motherfucking tasking. So here you got this dude who you've been with for several times, and he's already dicked you around. When I say dicked you around, I mean like he's dicked you around because you did say he's always hurt you like this. This is the part where you need to open your eyes and grow the fuck up. When a man continuously hurts you by cheating on you, then that means that he's not worthy of your time. And this is the type of man that you have to leave alone and move forward in life without him, okay? Stop conversing with him. Stop communicating with him. Block him and move forward. Yes, I understand you've had a relationship with him. You're probably used to certain things, doing certain things around him. But let me tell you something, sweetheart. When you leave a dog alone and you leave them in their dog house or you leave them at the animal shelter and you walk away from them, you find yourself less less scratchy, less itchy, meaning you don't have fleas anymore because dogs have fleas and you don't really want to lay down with a dog that has fleas, okay? So once you leave them at the animal shelter and you feel less itchy and scratchy, that's because you have left all the dirt and bullshit behind and you've moved forward with your life. Now, in the beginning of a relationship and you break up because you because you've broken up with the person, of course, sometimes you do feel heartbroken and you may feel a little depressed. This is because you are a human being and you have feelings, you know what I'm saying? It is always going to be an issue if you've been with somebody long term when you broke up that your heart feels some type of way, your heart weighs heavy. Granted, me and my husband, we'll have little little arguments and I'll hang up on him and not speak to him for a day or two. Do you really honestly think that I'm not mad or I'm not hurt or I'm not thinking about him? Man, listen, I, I'm thinking about him heavy and hard and any text message or phone call that I get, and if it's not him, I'm kind of disappointed because I don't want to take the initiative to be the bigger person and call him up and be like, oh, well, I'm sorry, because that's not me. I just say I don't like to say sorry. But I am heartbroken. However, it takes time. It takes healing. You know what I'm saying? And to jump back into a relationship with that same person because of what? Means because you was vulnerable and you feel some type of way. You, you're, 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 you're hurting for him. And you feel like being back with him will only make you feel better. And it's true. It may. But how long is that going to last for? 
he's disrespectful to you. And your world, yeah, your world may feel like it's crumbling right now. And it may feel like it's falling apart right now. I get that because sometimes mine feels like that too. You know what I'm saying? You have a good week, a good month, and everything is honky-dory. And when I say everything is honky-dory, I don't mean like butterflies are flying around your motherfucking head and people are throwing rose petals at your feet and the fucking fireworks are going off when you step in the room. I don't mean like that. What I mean is you ain't got no real drama bullshit. You may have just something tiny, obsolete, something minute happen. But that still is a good week or a month for you. And then, you know what? Life happens. This is what we call a life cycle. And that shit goes back to being, well, I got a bad day. I got a bad week. I got a bad month. This bullshit is happening. This bullshit is happening. That's part of life. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is going to be. And listen, you want to move out of your home because your mother and your father are coming over there and they're arguing. You know what I'm saying? Your dad, your, your mom is... um. Like not being like ladylike with your father, with you know what I'm saying? She's just not doing the right thing. Fuck it. And that's the reason why you want to move out. Listen to me, sweetheart. A lot of times you young adults, you want to move out because you just don't want to be bothered with the bullshit at home. But sometimes you have to take it and bear it because it's going to help you in the long run. For one, you got an eight-year-old brother over there. You really don't want to leave him alone because then he's really going to be fucked up and he's really going to feel some type of way emotionally, okay? So we really don't want to leave him alone. But two, you only make a certain amount of money and it's always best to get your career started and continue and make money and save up. So that way, when you finally do decide to move out, you're doing it on your terms, not being forced out, meaning I'm leaving because I'm tired of hearing this argument. That's kind of like being forced out, okay? That's for two. And now here's the issue. You save $5,700 for a car, but no one's trying to teach you how to drive, sweetheart. $5,700 is a nice chunk of change for a car. You can get, you can also take a little bit of that and get you some driver's lessons. Look up in your school, um, look up in your state, Google driving method or easy driving school, look up driving school. And I guarantee you, you'll be able to get a driving class with your money a little bit of your money. So that way you don't have to sit around and wait for nobody to show you how to drive. This is the problem with the world. A lot of times people feel like, well, I'm going to wait for this person or I, I want to do this, but they not helping me. Stop waiting for people to fucking help you and do shit and get up off your ass and do the shit yourself. Because if you sit around and you wait for somebody to do something for you or teach you how to do something, bitch, you're never going to learn. So that's why they have Google where you can call places and look them up and say, well, you know what? Since they don't want to teach me how to drive, I'm going to just pay for it myself. This is what we have to do as young adults and as adults in general. We have to make moves on our own and do shit on what our own time. Fuck everybody else. OK, straight up. Fuck everybody else and do the shit on your own time. Fuck how oh such and such is getting by or such and such is getting by. I'm going to just do this shit because I'm going to do this shit straight up. And that's just how it is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to take our own shit into our own hands, land on our own two feet and do shit on our own and stop waiting for people. That's just how it is. That's just life in general. And it's unfortunate, like, you know, you do depend on your parents to kind of like help you out with certain things, like having to learn how to drive. But you know what? My mother didn't teach me how to drive and neither did my father. Okay. I had to learn that shit on my own, but I also did have the best teacher of all time my boo. He taught me how to drive. And he might not have taught me everything because he didn't have a license, but you know what I'm saying? I was able to learn how to figure out the rules of the road by getting a driving book to teach me how to drive or teach me the rules of the road. Now, okay, now here's my turn. I don't have nobody to teach me how to drive and I'm just saying I'm free, but you know what? I have this money. I'm going to look up schools and I'm going to give them a call and see when it's an available time that I can make myself a driving school method appointment. Straight up, it's just that easy. You know, we have to be an adult. There's always ways to work around shit. And I know life gets hard. Life gets kind of hectic and shit. But you know what? It's a ladder. And I say this all the motherfucking time. It's a goddamn ladder and you got to climb that shit. I don't think we ever going to reach the top 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 of the ladder like that like honestly i really really don't only because it's a motherfucking ladder and like seriously we're gonna be climbing that shit until the day we die and then once we climb to the top or climb somewhat semi to the top we just gonna go all the way back down into the dirt you know what i'm saying like straight up when you think about it you didn't climb this ladder of success 
for, you know, for all of your life from being a baby to learning how to sit up on your own, to learning how to crawl, to learning how to walk, to learning how to use the potty, to learning how to feed yourself, dress yourself, make friends at school, get a job, education, do schoolwork. This is a ladder of success. And we climb this shit every fucking day. And then by the time it's all said and done, we are pushed back down, all the way down real quick to the end of the ladder because our time is up. And let me tell you something. Time is short. Don't let nobody fucking make you feel like your life is miserable or you can't deal with it anymore because they shit is miserable. Don't allow that shit. You got to take that shit, grasp it and own that shit and just let people know, you know what? This is my life. I'm going to make myself happy. If you can't make me happy, I can make my own self happy. You got to grab that shit by the motherfucking balls and be in charge of that shit and own it straight up. Don't allow negative energy around you. Like this is why a lot of times I've realized why I don't have so many friends because I don't like negative energy. I can't deal with the negative shit. Like, and it don't have to be talking about somebody or gossiping. It could be just like your negative energy about life in general or shit or certain issues. I can't take that because that shit is so powerful that it kind of like feeds off of people. And I'm the type of person like, I don't like drama, like, because I know me, if you give me drama, then we're going to have a problem. And I don't really want to go back to those realms of my old school days. Like I'm too old for that. I'm a grandmother. Okay. I got grandsons, three grandsons. I don't have time for that, but you know what I'm saying? I stay away from drama and I keep to myself and that's a lot of reasons why I don't have friends is because I just don't need the negative energy but I will not allow somebody with that negative energy around me for too long because I start sensing it and it's it's sad to say that there are a lot of negative Nancy's in the world versus positive patties okay and I'm not gonna say I'm positive patty and I'm not gonna say I'm a negative Nancy I'm in the middle okay I'm just neutral I'm like bias okay um, April, I'm, I'm trying to think positive and, you know, sometimes I may go to the negative with my bullshit, but I try to stay more or less with positive Patty. We try to hang out all the time to fuck with negative Nancy. And it's just a lot of negative in the world. And like, it's unfortunate that, you know, as kids, especially for those who are younger and who are doing a lot of positive things in their life and they're trying to get ahead, you know what I'm saying? They're just doing good. It's sad to say that, you know, these ones, they have to go through a lot in life. Like with me, I went through a lot in life in general too. But, you know, I just feel like we have to grow up a little bit. We have to kind of like think outside the box. Like seriously, she feels like her life is falling apart. No, sweetheart, it's not falling apart. It's just that it's time for you to take matters into your own hands, okay? And just be a more adult about it. And just take matters into your own hand. And watch when things pan out for you or like when you take matters into your own hands and you start doing them on your own and you start putting your foot down about certain things, then life gets a little bit easier for you and you see things a lot differently, you know what I'm saying, compared to or versus all the bullshit that you have seen in your past. You know, that's the only way I could best describe it. But you guys, I'm going to go because, you know, it is 2.15 and I got to get Mumsy in an hour. So I really did want to do like another wig video. Like, you know, I'm not saying that I'm going to post a wig up, video up, but I just really wanted to do another wig video. What do you guys think? So you guys, I love you. Oh, yes. Did you see this makeup look? If you did not see my video yesterday, which was for Shop Miss A, you bitches best to go watch it because they got the new holiday collection out. And girl, my face is the beat to the gods, to the dollar thrifty gods, because this is all Shop Miss A. Like, seriously, look at this. Oh, yes. Great stuff, great new items. They are like the highlighter goddesses at Shop Miss A, seriously. So I love you guys. Stay Diva and Divalicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Subscribe. Leave your thoughts down below for Brie and Sammy. And also congratulations, okay, or in order to my other subscribers who are on their way to baby number two and to get married. So I love you guys. Uh, yeah, I love you guys. Stay Diva and Divalicious, and I'll see you soon. I'm not